Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the slowlawyers.py script that I simplified a little bit in order to explain it to you easier. So the first thing you have to know is we're importing the default modules right here that we have in Python already. And then we're importing socket, random time and sys, which are going to help us to connect the stuff, the randomized stuff, to know the time. So you don't really need sys, so I'm going to comment this out. And we have the main, which is running right here. Then we have the exception, which says connection refuser, which basically means if the server refuses connection, if it's down or something like that, it's just going to retry and call main again. So what we have right here is a try, and then everything is in try. So first we're making the global of all these sockets because we want to use it whatever we want, to be more precise in this while true. And then we're defining it right here, but we're going to get to that later. So first thing we're going to know is headers. So headers are the things that when you're connecting to the website, uh, the server has to know that you're coming from Mozilla Firefox. He has to know that you speak English or he has to know that you want to keep your connection alive. Most importantly for this occasion, we need to keep the connection alive. So you do need to have this. As far as these are concerned, you can just copy this and then you can actually just for this one, you can actually just Google that for any of your browsers. You need to have this because if you don't have this, it's just going to assume that where as a matter of fact, if you're using the Python's request, it's going to say request, user agent is requests, and it's going to, the server is just going to block you off because it knows that you're a bot. So you need to have these right here. There are a list of stuff, and you're going to pass that list to the server once you're ready, uh, one by one. And then how many sockets we specify 200, for example. So it, depending on depending on the server, this 200 is going to be enough for an Apache server, but I think NGINX can be like 500 or 600. Uh, then we have the IP. I'm just using my local IP. And then we have port 80. But you can use 443 as well. Uh, people have been asking, can you use uh, slow and 443? Yes, you can. Like the SSL itself doesn't prevent you in any way, but um, there might be some other things. And then you have all the sockets is an empty list in which we're going to append sockets once they're ready. So 4K in range, how many sockets? Uh, as you can see, 200 right here. We're going to make try. We're going to go with try and accept. We're going to print an exception because we shouldn't really have problems here. So what we're doing is we're defining the socket. So we're using the sock stream. This can be TCP, UDP. So this is basically the stuff you got to write uh, using the socket module in order to get the socket ready. The syntax can be kind of weird. Socket.socket, socket, socket dot AFN, and socket dot sock stream. I know, right? But still, it just has to go that way. So what you do here is define it into a variable. And then using the set timeout for in order to just like make sure that the time is correct for everything and that everything is set up. And then you're using the s.connect IP and the port. And as you can see right here, we're using this IP and the port. And you do have to use the double brackets. That's the case in right here in the socket module. And then we're appending that to the all the sockets. And then right here, we're printing how many sockets are ready. Uh, we can just, you don't have to use range. You can just use this number. I don't know why I put range. Uh, I guess it was late when I was writing this. Also, you're defining the number equals zero, and then you're adding to the number. And then for each and all the sockets, you're actually just counting out all of the numbers. So you're just writing out which number is this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, until 200. And you're appending the number up once it's done. Actually, this should be on the like bottom, but it's fine. R.send, and then you're sending the first get thing HTTP with a random number right here and encoding it to UTF-8. And then you're sending successfully send that. So we're getting ready. And then for header, you're setting the headers. So we're sending basically these to make sure that they know we're not a bot. And then we're printing successfully sent the headers. And then while this is true, we're going to jump onto the most important part right here. Uh, for B in, so in all the sockets, so we're basically doing the same thing but calling it V this time. We're going to try and accept if it doesn't work, we're just going to do the same thing. So I'm not going to go over this, we're just going to do the same thing. And if it goes through, we're going to use the print and say, uh, successfully sent keep alive headers, which means basically the thing that we're most interested in. And then we're sleeping off for a second. You can actually put this 10 as well. Uh, I think this default was 10 and just like make pauses in the attack, but we don't want to do that. So uh, let's get to this try. So this is where the magic happens. Uh, V.send, we're sending the XA and yeah, it sounds like Elon Musk's child and the double dot and then a number and then an R and an N. So basically what we're doing right here is we're sending the number, random number, just so we're sending some kind of data. And then we have the R and N. Now, keep in mind that this R and N actually looks when you're closing the connection, like when you're ready to close the connection, it looks like this. So there's double R and N. We're just sending one. 
R and 1N. So this is basically new line. And that means the server is going to wait. And it's going to keep the connection open because we already sent some data. X and A is going to mess up the whole thing. And then especially if you have a lot of X and A's for V, so let's say 200 of them, the server is going to be really confused because it's going to be keeping everyone on waiting. And then it can't do anything. Uh, so that's what brings down the server. Now the problem if you're using Windows and you're trying to DOS yourself on a local host, you're going to get this error. So don't do that. Just uh, use the VM or something like that or just run on another server or something. Okay, so let's test this out. I want to show you that. This this does work. All right, so now that I'm on my Kali machine, I'm actually going to boot up my terminal and I'm actually going to write. So there we go, the server actually works. And now if you run the slow lowers onto that IP and then port 80 because it is port 80 and we run it, it's actually going to send the sockets and you're going to see the numbers right here. It's actually preparing and it says waiter sent right here and then it's keeping alive, waiting for a second. And if we try to refresh the page, it's actually not going to work. As you can tell right here, it's just loading, nothing is happening. So as you can see, I actually, I actually have the internet, so that's not the problem. Like, it doesn't really matter. Still works, Control, Shift, and R, still works. Let's kill it. So as you can tell, after some time, Apache just brings it back. But if I F5 again, there we go. So it was cached, basically. So Control, Shift, and R does it, because it caches sometimes, and then it loads the cached version, if you can't load the real version. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.